today we are showing featured entries from the January Art Dare, and we are announcing the March Art Dare. The January Art Dare, well, first let's tell you that our prof is a global community for learning visual arts. We have tutorials, critiques, professional development, and workshops. January Art Dare was to create an artwork with any media, with any type of border. So let's take a look at some of the entries that we had. So this first one is by Judith. And Judith explains that she's been very excited about Art Nouveau. And loosening up prompted me, she says, to use some markers. And this is what came about. So what do you think of this border? Because it has that Art Nouveau reference. But I, I think Judith really made it her own. Definitely. I love the use of colors. Also, I think if my computer's correct, it looks like turquoise and that's one of my favorite colors. Uh, but yeah, I really love the use of the curvature and also the uh, decorative style. It feels very art and to me. I really like looking at the color scheme that Judith created because actually in terms of value, the purple and the green are pretty similar. They're both about the same darkness. But then when you get this pop of yellow in the corner, it really shows up against everything else. And then also the fact that the colors are distributed in the actual center image as well. What do you think about the topography? You, you do way more graphic design than me. Yes. No, I, one thing that I can always say about topography is experiment, experiment, experiment. That's just my thing with all my work in general is experiment, but I love the way that it's organized. I would love to see different colors implemented into like where you have like those thick black blocks using some of that like bluish uh, green in there would be really cool. But overall, I really love how it's laid out right now. I also just love that it's all hand drawn because I think with borders, because there's so much of them, like it really is easy to say, okay, I'll just draw this little piece and just repeat it and stuff like that. But it's like, Judith, even though all the pieces are sort of the same shape, like each one is just a little different. And I just, I don't know, maybe in the age of all the AI stuff, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, hand-drawn, flaws. I love this, bring it on. <laughs> okay, next artist is Pat McElroy by the way, is here live with us in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us, Pat. And so Pat did a lot of really cool experiments here. So he pieced together a frame. He also made a rubber stamp, which is the part on the right-hand side, and then applied embossing powder. And for the portrait, he explains, is trying making a bit of a collage few pictures together digitally to make that portrait. And so here's, okay, if, follow me here. <laughs> Stay with me. This is the rubber stamp. And then you put embossing powder, which is on the left-hand side. And then you heat it with a heat gun and it, it just like a little bit raised above. And so if I show you guys, this is our rubber stamp tutorial. Lauren does demonstrate this process. But I, I hope you can see, Dorian, how it's like a little raised, the black I part. I love it. it. The texture is beautiful on that. Like, it really gives it another life. And experimenting. I love that it's really a piece about experimentation, like trying out a new product, trying out uh, just the mirroring of the frame and making a frame that you haven't done before. It's a beautiful job. Yeah, and your technique, Pat, is exquisite. I mean, look at how beautifully rendered the fur is, the way it's carved. And isn't this so cool that this is two separate pieces? And the idea of having, okay, just half, <laughs> you only have to carve half the frame and then you print the rest. I mean, in some ways this is very sculptural, don't you think? Definitely. I think it's really cool to see that the experimentation led to probably in a sense a discovery of maybe a new process of making like future prints uh i would love to see more experimentations with this from pat because 
Yeah, like I, I love the texture in this and I love the way that it also gives it an age. Yeah, Pat, I've worked with you a little bit and I've seen all the hard work you've done with printmaking and it's like, it, it just gets better and better. Like your technique has become so impeccable for what you're doing. Like this is not an easy process. Like actually the applying of the hot whatever gun, what do you call it? Heat gun? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> the heat gun. Because if you do too much, it gets messed up. Mm -hmm. And you can see that, oh my gosh, Pat totally preserved all of those lines. Yeah. Jane says, thought this was amazing when I saw it on Instagram. George says, exquisite. Jazz says, border collie of art. <laughs> and Scarf and T says, love this frame creation. Beautiful. Nice work, Pat. Okay. Next artist is Marley's Headland. And again, Art Nouveau <laughs> is bringing people into that mindset. I mean, borders and Art Nouveau are certainly something that happens together. And so Marley's has a painting with ornaments that are often seen on houses in Belgium. So isn't this cool that Marley's is pulling from a cultural reference here? And also the second painting, Springtime, symmetry and bright colors. And so she added the red line and another flower. So wow. we have quite a bit here from Marley's. What do you think about this range of work? Great job, Marley's, especially as we've been talking about lately on the art prof staff is thumbnails and how important those are. Uh, so I love seeing your process and the floral motifs and just the way that you utilize the branches as the actual frame. I wasn't expecting that from anyone. So it's really cool to see you taking that risk and doing something that's completely unexpected. Marley's, I just love the variation of shape because you have these big leaves, you have these very plump looking cherries, but then do you see this little detail in the upper right hand corner? These like little pink dots. They're so tiny. You might not see them at first, but it's just like a little garnish that gives it a little bit more personality. So I think that was a great choice. And Dory, what do you think about this one? Such a different style than the other one. This one, honestly, it feels like it wants to be an abstract piece in the coolest way, but I also interpret everything that's there automatically. Like I love the use of dandelions and just the, I guess it's them as a flower is very light and like airy. And I feel like the contrast of that with such a stark and like straight lines, like heavy angles, it really creates a cool contrast of the content as well as the actual composition. And this one too, it's, it's beautiful and flowy like Art Nouveau but it's also a little quirky. I, I like that it's got this surreal look to it. You have all these elements and they're going in front of each other and behind. And it's a border that is not super rigid in mm -hmm. the edge. Like we sort of see the border entering into the center image. So I do really like that interaction. Manette says, love the bright flowers in the black background, geometric frame. And Lisa says the borders suit the artwork and enhance the overall experience. Jen says, I love these. Holly also, thank you all for supporting each other. It's so fun to do these streams because there's just a lot of parts of the internet where people are like, look at my painting, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> this is way better. <laughs> okay, let's look at Emmett's piece. And so Emmett's border is showing how humans perceive time through generational storytelling and evolution. So in the center scene, what we're looking at, Emmett portrays themselves reading my own book of life. Okay, so this is an artwork of Emmett's studio and inspired by old nautical maps, thematically drew inspiration from Jewish mysticism, cultural creation stories. So wow, a lot in this piece. So. This is so fun too, whenever you guys share work in progress so we can see what you do in the earlier stages of the drawing. And then here are some details 
and then we go back to the big piece. What do you think? I <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I love the combination of storytelling. I'm someone who's always been big on the way that a story is told. And so you can tell like on the right side, you saw like the uh, inverting like black hole shape. Uh, so that's something that's very representative of time. I love the use of language being a showing or a display of evolution. Uh, just overall, I think you incorporated some really unique elements that give the piece a lot of depth and that's very hard to do. So great job. I also think that the traditional interpretation of a border is, okay, everything's symmetrical, same thing in the corners and stuff like that. But it, it's, border, it's like there's no rhyme or reason to the design of it. It's just so spontaneous, but it's also related. Like, do you see how the little people down here at the bottom, they get repeated over mm -hmm. here but in a very different way and then it's like it transforms into a person with a more detailed head and then what do you think about this interior scene in the middle yeah i love that it because the piece is about time so being able to look at your own life within the frame of all of these other people's lives and times passing by it's like you're reading your own story i think that that's a really cool concept uh yeah, <laughs> I, I really like that. And it's one of those pieces, I, I just want to sit here and look at it for a while because there's probably so many things that I didn't see right away. And I just love the specificity of the scene. It seems like it's a certain type of couch. It's not just some generic piece of furniture. And so there is that personal touch to the interior design, but then we also have the figure who's sort of flinging their arm in the background and the scroll is then transitioning into the book. For example, Pat says the design breaks so far away from what I would imagine as a frame. Love how unique and meaningful it is. And Sonnet says the border certainly does look like a story. There's a narrative in the border. Like you don't usually think that. You usually think, oh, borders are decorative, right? Mm -hmm. But Emmett's telling a full out story throughout that border, which is really phenomenal. Okay, next artist is Ting Lu. And Ting explains, inspired by tarot cards, evocative power of symbolism. And this is a digital piece. Used hard brushes to compose a more graphic piece. It pivoted more and more towards sci-fi as the colors and shapes developed. Well, what's your take? Honestly, this makes me think of the uh, movie poster designs that you've been working on. It feels <laughs> very, like, Bold. It feels very Hollywood. Like it feels like you want to look at this and it's like, it's telling you what you're about to be watching is going to be intense. Like the colors, the use of the sun being like the whole composition or majority of the composition, I think is a really beautiful job. And also it not being a complete circle. I like because the sun actually isn't, a circle like it's a rock or a star that's like has divots and things that are going through it and spires spinning off of it and a great example that up here at the top the border is pretty clear-cut and consistent but then it's like whoa what is happening <laughs> down here at the bottom it's like the border just like disintegrates into <laughs> this bloody mess and then you have the splash down there at the bottom and so for me it's a really unusual border because you think it's all consistent and then it just totally does this 360 on you which you don't really anticipate so what do you think about these marks i love them it makes me i think they're called solar flares uh it makes me relate them to that because a solar flare isn't a complete straight like pointed uh, shape that we normally depict suns with. So I feel like it's actually very true to what, I don't know, I guess I imagine a sun being, and it's really interesting. Uh, I also love this because it makes me think of Avatar, and I got oh shot off Jordan. <laughs> it makes me think of like, what, it's like, what if Zuko wrote a book, like a biography? <laughs> what would it be called? I'm going to call this the sun because he burns bright. Like, hey, and he's the son of Ozai. Okay, that's it. Okay, back to the regular program. 
You are just <laughs> as bad as Jordan. What did I do? This is, I like hired Jordan in another form. <laughs> Gosh, between the Spider Verse and the Avatar. Okay, that means I get to talk about Hugh Jackman next. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's a really okay. I didn't know he was in this movie. It's a movie called Dundee. It's really silly, but he plays the prime minister, and he looks so good. Like he's he's like in his suit, and he's like so charming, and he's sitting at a desk and making big decisions. It's really good. <laughs> hey, Jen, I did watch Avatar, and in fact, I watched it because Jordan talked about it so much that I was like, dude, I need to. Like watch Avatar to understand you, Jordan. It it, it changes your life. It really does. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Next Ooh. artist is Tiffany Merrick, and this is a piece called "Unity Uniformity in Desolation." And so Tiffany was thinking about borders in which society places on individuals, while the individuality longs for the desire to conform and belong. And so Tiff mentions Tiffany, often leading segregation, informs compliance to normalize standards, and leading to desolation of individually and society as a whole. What do you think of this border? I want to print this onto some fabric. Like I love this a lot. Yeah. A big inspiration in my work is African motifs and also just uh, the textile work that they do. And the shapes that you have here are actually really in the same ballpark as a lot of the ones that I've seen. So I love the story that you're telling, the desolation, the separation, conformity, just ah, you're telling a really beautiful story and the colors are great. What do you think stands out the most to you in this, Claire? I think it's the starkness of it mm. because the white against the black it, it just really hits you. And then I look at patterns like this at the bottom. I know they're not literally this, but they remind me of teeth. Like they look a little bit aggressive down there. And then up here, it almost looks a little disorienting. So they're definitely, for me, there's like tension in the pattern. Do you see that? Yeah. And I also love the comment from Seventh Angelic uh, because yeah, I wouldn't even know which border is considered the frame. Like, where does the frame actually begin and where does it end? Because there's so many things. And I guess the way that it's segmented really goes with your story of like segregating and that cohesiveness that people are looking for within community, I guess. It's, yeah, this is sick. <laughs> I feel like it's borders and borders and borders, right? Mm -hmm. It just keeps going. Like it keeps subdividing these two inside this one, inside that one. It's almost like a maze of borders, which I think is such a different take on, typically people think about, okay, borders separate from mm -hmm. the image inside. They're usually really clearly delineated. Here it's like, we don't really know. And so it keeps us guessing for sure. Yeah, like Jane says, stark contrast is very attention grabbing. Also like the repeating geometric themes. Scarf and tea says beautiful patterning. All right, next artist mm -hmm. is Janet Hebert, who, by the way, is here live with us in the chat. <laughs> I always love it when you guys are here with us. And so Janet has two pieces. They're very different. Okay, so the first one we just saw was the sunset piece. And I guess Janet saw a fantastic sunset and blown away by a friend's photo and the light and colors permeated everything, and the sky looked like it was on fire, which certainly we can see that. And then <laughs> we have a piece on Wicked. By the way, it, there's a movie coming out. Like, I had no idea. I, I haven't really watched this musical, but I know it's very trendy right now for that reason. And so I guess Janet says, my sister and I dressed as Glinda, Wicked Witch of the West for a Halloween costume party. And so this is an illustration of Janet with her sister at that costume party. So what do you think of this border? I love that it's, it's, I'm also trying to discover where I think the border actually is because there is the one that's like directly around them that's kind of uh, no shape shape. 
But then I also love that the green dots and the lights that are drawing you in feel more like a frame in a cool way because it's like it's directing you to go into the piece itself. But then there's also stuff like this. There are these gears at the bottom and there's sort of a border to the left of the gears. But then that border continues at the top and then moves into the book. And then when we come back, we can see how much everything is really interwoven with everything yeah. else. And I love the glow. I think the glow, is, it's, it makes me think of Broadway lights and I'm going to Broadway to see Aaron to Vapors. See, when you bring up Avatar, this is what you bring up. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the sunset piece. What do you think of this? I love the use of the sunset colors actually being the frame uh, because then that color relates to the central part of the image in a really nice way. Uh, Again, yeah, finding inspiration and in things that you love is a beautiful way to just create work. So it's awesome that you saw your friend's photo and decided that you wanted to make a piece from it. So Janet says, the glow was really hard to execute what I saw in my head with alcohol markers. Wait, that's There's alcohol markers? markers? Yeah, I, I was like, what? <laughs> How is this alcohol markers? Oh my God. <laughs> that, that changes a lot. <laughs> it's incredible, wow. isn't it? Wow. And Janet, it's such a simple border. It's not like you have a billion details, but it's like, it really fits what's happening mm. inside. It has that glow and it's encompassing everything. So I think that is gorgeous. Oh, okay. Wicked was the marker. And the sunset <laughs> is acrylic. I was like, what? How is this? I would have been hitting you up like, okay, teach me the way. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. Okay, next artist is Nolan Yi. Nolan has several. And so these are inspired by both traditional historic decorative aesthetics with flat shading and heavy stylization. And so there's all kinds of inspiration here. So there are things like rune stones, and Chinese characters, and Mucha shows up again, Alphonse Mucha, an Art Nouveau artist, and amalgamation of Diana and the Queen of Heaven. There's just so many things in these pieces, and there are a lot of them. What do you think of these? Great work. <laughs> that, like, I'm just, this feels like I'm diving into one of my favorite books from middle school. It was a book about Celtic knots. So like just seeing the ways that you created those forms and you actually made them into the frame and incorporated them in unique ways. Just, yeah, overall, great job. I love the color choices a lot as well, especially that one. That's like my color palette. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nolan, you were so productive. There are so wow. many pieces that we're looking at here. And this is, I mean, my head hurts thinking about doing any kind of Celtic knot, whatever, is very challenging to do. But as an art history nerd, I'm like, oh, yes, bring on all of the <laughs> historical, mythological references. Because, I mean, I know contemporary life is exciting, but they were doing some amazing things throughout history. And I just love it when people hearken back to that experience because... Wow, those Celtic not people, uh, they probably just didn't have Netflix to watch, so they just did that all day. <laughs> They're like, how can I make this shape never end? Yes, exactly. Okay, next artist is Jonalyn. And so Jonalyn says that this piece is inspired by our country's, Jonalyn's country, traditional public utility vehicle. Vehicles are more than just a means to get you to destination. They were like art pieces that dominate the road. And Jonah and Skit making thumbnails, which I advocate it's okay to do once. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not everybody yeah. needs to do thumbnails. <laughs> and it says, depicts the uncertain future of tradi that traditional jeepney drivers, their dependents, once the jeepney phase out for PUV 
modernization law in force. So this is fascinating because there's an intersection of so many things here. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, can you actually go back to that jeepney part again? And this part? Yeah. I love the use of the license plate there and just like parts of, I'm pretty sure that's like a license plate. So if I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I love the use of parts of the car and the jeepney uh, being interwoven throughout the frame because then it tells a story about the person in the center. Like this is what his life is. This is what their life is. So great job on creating a full body story, uh, kind of similar, similarly to the other, uh, not contestants, artist. <laughs> and, and this is Marker. Isn't that incredible? I mean, yeah. look at how thorough and detailed Jonalyn was with this image. It's so intricate. And I think it really tells the story. Like, even if I don't have all the details of what this is about, I can see it's something about industry. And it seems like it's about transportation. And then you got these little clues, all these symbols, the Filipino flag. So I think it's a great piece. You just have so many elements going on, Jonalyn. And Scarfinti says it's so inspirational to see all the different styles of everyone's amazing artwork. Well, that's why we run these, because we can say our community rocks. <laughs> OK, next piece is by Matve. And Montve explains, feeling claustrophobic, the experiences post-college graduation adulthood, wanted to bring in my routines in the theme of a border. And so he explains that the mediums are all my most used tools, sticky notes, digital software, and journals, and a way to move beyond the cycles of nine to five exhaustion. Wow. So you can see there are literal post-it notes and torn up notes throughout these pieces. We've got some digital ones as well. So what do you think about this variety? For, for the variety, I love it. It's beautiful. And the story is definitely coming through. I, yeah, oh. And that gives me Steven Universe vibes in a cool way too. But <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the first one, I believe, the one, yeah, that one. That one speaks to me immediately because I felt that. That was me whenever I was working at a job and I was like, get me out of here. Like I can't yeah. be in this anymore. So the use of materials is very informed and really great job. Do you think that yeah. the materials informed this a lot? Oh yeah. I mean, I think the use of the post-it notes is brilliant. I love that the way the paper has been torn, but then there's also the visual of the highlighter that's throughout the border and that gives it mm. a little bit more structure. And this one's just so playful. Like it's such a different take. I like the watermelon earring. Did you just see that? Oh yeah. Right? Great job. I just think Great that's job. so cool. And then this one feels ah, more impressionistic. Yes. yes. I love the so, border being created by the actual subject of the photo. Like that's, that's really smart. Yeah, and you can see there is a section which has no border. And so I think that is a really nice area to show him creating his own life. So really nice work. We have some prizes to give out, everybody. The honorable mention goes to Janet. Congratulations on your wonderful work. And the prize winner is Emmett. Congratulations to all of you for your wonderful work. We are so proud of you for everything that you do, everybody included, because this is a community effort and I just, it's just make me proud. <laughs> so it makes me very happy. All right, let's talk about the March Art Dare, your first love, color. Which color is your first love? Da, red, what is your first love in terms of color? Me? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> How did I guess that one? <laughs> We're gonna get I mean, to like, that in a I minute. Can also, like, show you like this shade of it, like mm -hmm. any anything that relates to the color of denim, like blue jean denim. I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. So tell me in the chat, 
what is your first love in terms of color? Because I'm still dating fresh and blue. We're on and off. Oh, it's, God. Just, it's complicated. I mean, I like cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is always there for me. But red, red is it. Like, if you just told me, Clara, you can only wear red the rest of your life, I'd be like, sure, sign me up. So tell me in the chat, what is the color you have a passionate love for? So Lauren has done quite a few paintings, which are a single color. And to be clear, we're not saying you can't add other colors. We're saying that the piece should be predominantly one color. So obviously you can see here, Lauren's added touches of yellow, but it still reads as green. There's a little bit of blue in there. So in terms of the actual color mixing, do whatever you want, but it has to be like predominantly, like this one's mostly purple. This one is also mostly like a purpley gray. And this one is sort of like a indigo turquoise. So Dorian, tell us about color in relation to your denim designs? So I love denim. And I say that every time I'm on a stream. Uh, if you haven't learned it yet, I love denim. <laughs> so the reason why I use denim as a material is the stories that it holds. And also the material itself is really forgiving uh, and durable. I love the way that certain colors like this can be on the same piece of jeans just because of the way that sun hits it and it gives the blues different views uh, naturally so having the opportunity to just cut up different shades of it different thicknesses of the denim uh, the blue really just speaks to me in a way that i never expected to and apparently you've got piles of different shades how do you organize it so it starts off with looking at if it's jeans that are donated, I always deconstruct the jeans entirely and I go based off of the size. So if it's like a 34 inseam or a 42 inseam, then all of the big stuff like 36 and up is like one pile. Anything smaller is usually all in the same family. So that's one pile. And then I do like shades of white, shades of blue, shades of light blue, dark blue, black because it's all the same material, but it really does make a difference when you combine them in ways like on that bag. Absolutely. I mean, I, I guess I never really thought about all the different colors of denim, but it's like, there's some really subtle ones where it's just like a little, little bit more gray or ones like a little tint of green. I imagine that that must have made you very sensitive to those color shifts. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely did. <laughs> Do you have a color that you think you gravitated towards immediately? Here's the funny the thing is that red is always my favorite color. Like when I was a kid, I had all red socks. I remember that. <laughs> and I have a red hat that I wear in the winter and I, I love that red hat so much. So I guess I like to wear red. But actually a lot of my work, it's either monochromatic or full out color, but I did find I have done a couple studies like this is a bread fairy piece because she set the table with all blue actually it was like blue tablecloths and a blue pitcher and so i didn't do other colors i did just straight blue and that's another way you guys can do it like there's another one the same table setting where i just use alcohol inks that were blue and i added alcohol and moved things around my rag and everything so it's a challenge don't you think to just do one color? Yeah, because you have to really understand the properties of a color in order to yeah. successfully challenge yourself with it. Or at least that's how I look at it. Uh, being able to see that blue can somehow turn into white, you have to understand what extent you can push that color to get to white or just before it's white. And so, yeah. I think that's the best way of me answering that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lexi is asking, does iridescent count? Do you have to pick one color that is iridescent. And those of you smarty pants who are asking about rainbow, no, that does not count. You have to pick one color. Yeah. One of Jane's friends says favorite color is sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. Yeah, so 
think about that color because I actually think pink and red are really difficult because something's red. Okay, that's fine. But when you add white, it turns to pink. And I have mm -hmm. always been sort of annoyed by that because pink has just so many associations that I oftentimes didn't want in the work. But then yeah. what else do you do with red? You make it darker, it turns to brown. So I actually think red is not easy to use. Mm. And we have a question for you, Dorian. Amanda's saying, is there a place or a PO box where we can donate Dunham to you? Yes. Uh, I guess the best way for you to reach out to me is on Instagram or at Dorian at blacktopmarket.shop and I can send you all of the information. Uh, I will be posting that onto the actual website tonight. I should do that. So if you have donations, thank you. Appreciate that a lot. It's always welcomed and always meaningful. And you do get a shout out whenever the piece is finished. So, yeah. <laughs> And there is going to be a Discord chat afterwards, so perhaps we can exchange information there. And this is really cool. So Blue Daisy says, I drew on a jean jacket once yes. with a bleach pen. I, I've seen you do stuff like that. And Ambar is suggesting an artist who does awesome monochromatic portraits. So this is going to be really fun. We're really going to push our comfort zones in terms of color. And if you want to do the Art Dinner Leap, this is not required. This is just for those of you who want that extra nudge create four artworks and each one has to be a different color. I think that would be a really good challenge for some people. Use the Discord where you can hang out and share your works in progress. To officially enter, you wanna tag us at artprofdare and you also want to tag us at art.prof. So on artprof.org, if you don't have social media, you can go to Art Dares. And if you scroll down on the Art Dare page, you'll see that we do have a Google form. So don't worry if you're not on social media. Guess what, everybody? We have an Art Prof Share. This is just Ooh, like, oh man, I'm so proud of everybody tonight. So Art Prof Share is when one of you creates work in response to our content. And guess what, everybody? Before I tell you that, we have a giveaway in the Discord, one free session for all Discord members. So you guys will want to check that out because it's really, really fun. Anyway, Drawing Basics Track. Elvera, who is one of our fantastic mods in the Discord, finished the Drawing Basics track. And so Elvera explains that she's painted more than drawing, decided to go back to the basics. And Elvera says, my mark making has improved and will hopefully translate to painting. And so a lot of this is practice. But oh boy, it's a lot of practice. <laughs> what do you think, Dorian? People do this entirely on their own. I think it's beautiful to have that determination to get better. And it honestly shows throughout the process. All of these show the actual growth that you're displaying. And kudos to you for also recognizing that you wanted to get better drawing so you could be a better painter because being informed about another medium does strengthen other areas. I mean, this is a ton of work, you guys. This is definitely a track that tests your stamina because I think sometimes most of us haven't done this amount of work. And Dorian, isn't it so nice where you surprise yourself? You're like, whoa, I did that. And you see how much you did. And then you count how many photos you took and you're like, I did a hundred drawings. What? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And Elvera, just the expressive range that you wow. have, all the different styles that you incorporated. And then these pieces about texture, and going into the final artwork. I mean, congratulations. And I, I love your slides, Elvira. <laughs> these are really mm -hmm. fantastic, showing the buildup. And wow. these are emotional pieces. I mean, I feel that every single one of them has such a strong story to tell. Um, Elvira also experimented with PBA glue and mm -hmm. she's done fantastic work. You guys have probably seen her around the Discord. So now would be a great time to say thank you to Elvera and also the other mods because they are incredibly important in terms of keeping the space safe and also inclusive. So there will be a Discord chat after the stream. If you want to meet in post live streams, that is going to be Dorian. So if you guys want to hang out with him, that would be awesome. We also have workshops that are running. These are officially going on. We have backgrounds, drawing hands and feet, measure landscapes, 
oil pastel, watercolor. Oh wait, that one's full. Sorry, not that one. <laughs> Color palettes. And we keep these open until the workshops are full or two days before the workshop. Huge shout out to our top Patreon supporters. Oh my God. What would we do without you and your amazing loyalty and help? You guys are incredible. Visit our prof.org. Tons of content on there. That's not on YouTube. Use the search bar. Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And look at how cute Gumby is. He's just so fuzzy. I just love this picture. <laughs> do you like guinea pigs? <laughs> I do. I do. They're adorable. My favorite movie as a kid was G-Force. So I've been making a lot of G-Force comments on TikTok. <laughs> oh, I love that. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.